personally. I'm Sheila Coles in Regina. This is the Friday edition of The Current on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius 137. All over the world, groups for human rights and journalistic freedom have condemned Lasantha Wickramatunga's murder. In Sri Lanka, the opposition is calling for an international investigation to determine who killed him. And because he was such a politically divisive figure, whose death has come at such a crucial time for the country, the Sri Lankan government is coming under a lot of pressure to find some answers. Bandula Jayasekura is Sri Lanka's Consul General, and he's in Toronto. Good morning. Good morning, Sheila. What is your reaction? Action, first of all to the murder of this journalist yeah, the, the I mean nobody could sort of expect I mean nobody has the right to take anybody's life and it is wrong so I mean we totally condemn the president and the government has condemned the assassination in the strongest possible forms and there's already an investigation has started with uh, four police teams working on the case so it's I mean it's total outrage and I would say everybody in whole of Sri Lanka I mean, not only the media, human beings, we all condemn it fully. What is your reaction to his accusation? He said, if I die, it will be the government that is behind it. It is easy to point the finger at the government. It's easy, like it's for the now. The leader has been, his newspaper has been in existence for 15 years. I mean, he had many issues with different leaders and different people, not only politicians, but others. So that's the easiest thing to blame the government, but there's an investigation underway. So till we find... But, but why, would he, why would he blame the government unless he had reason to believe that he was at risk there? No, no be, because you cannot, because that, that, that's the thing, because he's not here to answer, so we, we, we can also have a debate on that. But the thing is, even this editorial, even we don't, really don't know whether he wrote the editorial. People say it's not... Are, I, are you questioning whether it actually was yeah, penned because by him? Having uh, written uh, read the newspaper, there's nothing below saying that he had written it. So that's that's one thing. So if the paper says this was written by him, we can accept it. But but the thing is, it's it's e always easy. For example, I'll tell you an example. When the president Premadasa was there some time ago, he was accused of killing the then National Secretary Minister Lalit Atulat Modeli. And one week after. And the president Prem Das was very sad and he said, don't assassinate my character. One week after, he was killed by the LTT. And even the National Secretary Minister's family said it was not Prem Das. It's easy to have the blame game. But let, I mean, the time will tell who did it. And since the police investigations are underway. Well, let me ask you about the, the police investigation. We just heard that uh, in the past there have been, there has been not one prosecution, that various commissions have been set up to investigate the deaths of journalists and, and crimes against journalists, but there has been not one prosecution. I will tell you, Sheila, it's not only journalists. Let me, I'll tell you, uh, no, say the Foreign Minister Lakshman Kadaragama was assassinated in his house. I mean, they say it's LTD, but there's still we are trying to find. We have gone through this conflict for 26 years. The second, I mean, we sometimes we just shout and we try to sort of uh, say, make it uh, just sensational. But take the case of the head of the Sri Lankan army, military intelligence, Colonel Mutalif. While he was going to office, in his car he was shot. I mean, he was the head of the military intelligence. We are still trying to investigate because the last 27 years we have fought this ruthless uh, Tamil Tiger terrorists. But why would journalists be, be targets? So this, yeah, this is now, this is what we cannot, I, you can't say the government was targeted. So the journalists now say take, I mean people can, so we are, we are at a severe conflict and fighting the most ruthless the Tamil Tiger terrorists in the world, the most ruthless terrorist group like the FBI, FBI has described. So we, nobody is targeting journalists per se. But take even the journalists. Well, somebody is targeting journalists. Yes, somebody. So I agree with you. So that's where the government will do everything, uh, what he, what the government could do to find out the killers. Not but only. Why, but why do you think the government has been unsuccessful in the past to finding people who have killed journalists? Why has there been not one prosecution? Yeah, I would like to bring this at this since I'm speaking from Toronto. Now I have been here for ten or eleven months. And I have seen in Ontario, there's so much of random killings. I have monitored watching TV, watching ra ra radio here and reading the newspapers. We haven't heard of any journalists. No, no, not shot. journalists. Let me tell you, we are, in Sri Lanka, we are facing a conflict. But here, I've seen random killings. And I haven't seen anybody being brought to book for that. I mean, you would say the state of Ontario. Mm -hmm. At least 40 random killings. 
people who are standing outside the bar, people who are walking or inside the jeep, they're shot for no okay. purpose. I, un I understand what you're saying, but I am just looking for your opinion on why you believe there has not been a successful prosecution in the case of the killing of any journalist yeah, so in I your country. No, yeah, I agree, but what I have to bring that, you know, it's, it's uh, not easy, you know, say uh, your country, but here we are talking random things, but Sri Lanka is facing a conflict. There are sometimes there are some people would not come want to come and answer. So there are situations, but the investigations are on, and the truth will come out one day. So it's, one should not be, uh, take the easy way out and blame the government. I mean, take the last 15 years of the existence of leader. Is where I think Mr. Vikram Tunga during President Prem Dasa's time he even left the country. And to add to this, I will also add that okay, Charu Lata Joshi used words. Uh, very freely like words, impunity. But I was a former journalist and I worked with Lasanta Vikramatunga. This is some information I need to tell you. Mm -hmm. So which, I mean, I worked with the Sunday leader and I left because we disagreed. So it's like that. So where, if you look at it now, with, with I mean, with all respect to Lasanta, I mean, he has antagonized so many people. So there, there could be so many enemies like as journalists. We have had issues. How would you describe the climate for journalists who, who are trying to hold the government accountable today. How would you describe the climate for journalists in Sri Lanka? Sheila, if you read the Sunday newspapers in Sri Lanka, if you should get some content, the government had been criticized severely, like the, not only the leaders, people had been criticized personally, and the climate is there. I'll tell you, when I was the editor-in-chief of a newspaper, my mobile phone was published in the newspaper of Mr. Vikramatunga where I had, and then my personal mobile phone. And then even he carried an article saying that I was carrying a revolver, I was carrying, I was having security guards, so made me vulnerable and to attacks. It has been that, we all have faced that. It is a very different conflict situation. But still, one has to see, now yesterday, I got, I spoke to a journalist of Globe and Mail, right now in the north, of uh, Sri Lanka and she said what a wonderful place she's doing the reporting you saw it's a Stuart Bell of the National Post going and reporting from the well so these are foreign journalists and perhaps that's a no, different not case. only foreign but journalists I, I have lived all my life and then I will go back people can but there has to be what you call responsible journalism from anybody in any job or they die no I don't say that I didn't say that Reporters Without Borders and other human rights groups have said it is the most dangerous place in the world to practice journalism today. I don't agree with it. I mean, people can say in the cool climes of London, people can say in different capitals, but I was born there, I lived there, and I go back to die there. It is not bad as, you know, it's not. But how many of these people would speak of what's happening in Gaza, about thousand dead, so many children? So it is not fair we are fighting the most dreaded and the ruthless terrorist group in the world. Why not speak of that? It's easy to point a finger at a small and a poor country. We have suffered a lot. I mean, we have suffered a lot. We have lost so many people. And even the, if you talk of the Tamils, they are a very cultured group. We have lost most of the innocent Tamils. And nobody talks of them. It's easy. How long do you think this investigation into this murder will take? When do you think there will be some, some findings and Gee, some I'm results? sorry, being in Toronto, I, I, I must call Colombo and I will get back to you, but I cannot say it right now without checking with Colombo. All right. Thanks very much for your time this Thank morning. Thank you very much, Sheila. Bye-bye. Bandula Jaya Sakura is Sri Lanka's Consul General in Toronto.